Today I want to talk about a more advanced Go pattern for managing concurrency levels in Go. It's uh, very well known, of course, that Go is uh, brilliant for writing concurrent programs. Its primitives, you know, Go routines, channels, um, make concurrency easy and predictable and safe. Um, but it could almost be uh, accused of making concurrency too easy. Um, and it's always important when you know ex executing concurrent code that you think about the consequences for or side effects for anything which you're operating on. So a good example of this is imagine you had um, to, you need to make a number of requests. Say it was to, uh, I don't know, an, an API and you need to make requests for a, number of, for a number of IDs. So we'll write this out as, you know, imagine they're just integers and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make these um, uh, contiguous numbers here for the, the demo, which well, we can do shortly. But imagine, yeah, you need to go through and make a request for each one of these records. So the standard way of doing this, taking advantage of Go's concurrency model, um, would be simply to iterate through each, um, iterate sorry through the slice of request IDs, and for each, just make a request. Right? Assume func make request is uh, just some, you know. It, in reality, it would be making a HTTP request, for example, but here we'll just mock its asynchronous nature um, with, with a sleep. So, of course, also, by the way, you know, you would need your weight group. Uh, so each one would add to the weight group, and then we'd wait for it. And then at the end, we'd know we were done. But there's an obvious problem with this with this approach, which is that we have no control over the rate that requests are being made. So say that we own this um, the server that we're making requests to, we might not look favorably on getting all of these requests concurrently. Um, and we can we can you know witness the effect of that when we run it here. Um, got a panic, but I'm not too worried about that. You see how the the requests were all made at once. This could be potentially quite dangerous for a uh, for a server if you, if you had one if you were receiving 15 requests all at once or you know potentially hundreds or thousands of requests with no concurrency limit, uh, this is not a situation you want to be in. So what you want to do, uh, we, we obviously didn't call, uh, wait, got done, sorry, it just, <laughs> um, yeah, we want to actually limit the throughput of requests here. So for example, if we, if we only wanted to at any time have three open connections to our, server, we can set a concurrency limit of three. How would we implement that in Go while still making use of Go routines and other Go primitives? Well, first of all, we can we'll keep this, but everything else can we can throw away here. If we were um, going to do that, we can, we can use a channel instead. And remember that we can use channels almost as buffers. So we could create a channel with a bool type, for example, and set that buffer size to our concurrency limit. So this allows us already to control in some way throughput, because we know that at any one time, there can only be three Boolean values inside this queue. So we're already going in the right direction. 
Um, and as before, we can uh, we'll probably iterate through. Uh, we'll range through our slice or request IDs. Um, but this time, before we uh, make our um, let's start our go routine, well, no, let, let's actually implement that first. So, um, as before, we'll make our request inside of a go routine. Um, we'll pass an ID. Always remember, as a side note, if you're um, working with go to routines like this. The val this value will have changed by the time that this go routine executes because this will happen asynchronously so this will iterate through uh, uh, sorry synchronously so by passing it into the function here we um, cement cement each iterate uh, sorry each of these values so we can then pass that in there just as before we're calling this inside a go routine but what we now need to do, Remember, we're using this channel uh, like a like a queue, like a, a, a limiter of throughput. So, for each ID, we need to get a place in the queue, and we know that that channel can only allow three or however many our concurrency level is into the into the queue or through the actual channel at any one time. And if that queue is full, then we have to wait. Uh, and will be blocked here. So we can use that, that we know only three at any one time will be passing through here. So then of course we can defer that we empty our spot in the queue when we're done. And this gives us almost everything that we need to implement concurrency, uh, concurrency because um, so we're queuing, only three at any one time can, can get past this line 18 to make the request. When the request is uh, complete, we give up our spot so the next person in the queue can then make their request. Now, we are missing something. Let's see if we, if we clear this and run it. I'm not sure if this will be very obvious from the demo. Um, sorry, I've got to clear up this and... Um, ah, yeah, I, I can't actually. This I can't call this a constant. It's a slice. Um, let's see if from this demo we can see we we can witness. The, ah, yeah, we can. So you probably saw from that demo. If I run it again um, and make this sleep a little larger. You can now see from the demo that only three are being run at any one time, and as soon as one gives up their spot, the next one comes through. Now they're all finishing at the same time because the weight is exactly the same. Of course, if this request was a real request, then one might take slightly longer than the other, uh, and it wouldn't come in batches of three exactly, but it gives us a good indication at least that that concurrency level is working. But if you take a look at this request, these request IDs here, you might notice a problem, which is that we're missing uh, 13 onwards. And the reason for it is this, that we only block until um, each uh, ID has gotten a spot in the channel. So when the last three values get their spot in the channel, they pass this line, we're no longer blocking. Even though these requests are being made inside of the go routines, we're no longer blocking the main routine. So therefore, it exits because there's nothing stopping it. And these go routines are uh, orphaned. That's why we get into that position where these final three, the, the, the code is executing somewhere here, but the outer routine is finished and, and those requests are orphaned. So what we need to do finally is make sure that we flush that queue, that we, that we push out all requests to the other end. Um, and the easiest way of doing that is just an, is another iterator 
which will execute as soon as those final three get their spot in the queue. Um, and for every spot in the queue, we just need to fill it with a final value. So what this is saying is we won't exit, we will block until we've managed to push three in this case extra values into the queue. That is fill the entire queue with these useless values. And what that tells us is if, if we're able to block until we can, we can fill this channel with these sort of dummy values, it means that we know that all the request values have completed and, um, and have given their spot back, given their spot up because they are, um, they've completed their requests in this case. So hopefully now we should be able to see that in action. Let me um, make this delay a little bit shorter so that we can just see, uh, we can see this in action. But as before, you know, it's coming in chunks of three, and then we get the, fin the final three, and they actually execute in this case. Again, because we made sure that that queue was flushed. So that is how we limit concurrency in Go, and I think this is a very important anti-pattern, sorry, very important pattern um, to know in Go. It's very nice because it uses two of the most important Go primitives, the Go routine and the channel. And this is exactly how Go is meant to be used, using these communication and, and uh, parallel primitive or concurrency primitives. One other thing to note, and uh, I'll, I'll run this so it's clear. Um, these only come in batches of three because, like I said, this time is exactly the same. But, um, in fact, each new request we, we don't wait for all three to complete before sending the next three. As soon as one is completed, the next one fills its place. But it's important to know that the throughput is three. That doesn't mean we batch in threes. But anyway, that's um, how we limit concurrency levels in Go. I think it's a very important um, pattern to know. And um, I think we'll leave it there for today. Uh, if you, if you like these sort of short explanations of the more advanced, um, say, features of Go or another programming language or other concepts, um, please click the like button so that, um, so that I know that. Leave a comment with any feedback you have or any questions you have. And then um, subscribe because these videos are coming out every weekday. Um, and if you like this one, I hope you'll like the rest too. Uh, in the meantime, thank you much, very much for watching and uh, I'll see you soon.